Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel Bytes blog post. Today we're going to take a look at how to compare before and after inventory lists when the inventory might be in multiple locations and the lists are not in the same order and I want to see how the quantities of those items changed from say month to month or year to year whatever those two periods are. So let's see how we can do that in Excel. So again, our scenario is I have a inventory list of 61 items and you can see that, say for example, 1403 is in location one, but 1404 is in location one and two, and here's the quantity. And here's my before inventory and my after inventory. Notice also that they're not in the same order. Before begins with 1403, 1400 is down here in row 11, where in my after, we have 1400 starts at the top. So they're mixed up to some degree. Now we're gonna use Power Query to accomplish this. So what we're going to do is click somewhere in my data, go to the data tab, and in the get and transform data, I'm going to say from table slash range. And Excel will first want to convert that data to a table. I'll say OK. And now it'll bring up the Power Query editor, and I can start manipulating and modifying the data from here. Now the first thing I want to do is Notice where we have certain part numbers in multiple locations. The part number is not in the row where location 2 is. So I need to fill these down to make sure that those part numbers are in all of the rows. So I'm going to go to Transform, and under Fill, I'm going to say Fill Down. And now, wherever there was a blank, it grabbed the part number above and populated in that cell. So I have no more blanks here. Next thing I want to do is, so I have a unique item to compare, I want to concatenate the part number and location into one cell so I can use it as my comparison. So I'm going to choose part number, hold down my control key, choose location, then I'm going to add a column and I want to merge these columns. And my separator, I'm going to just put a space in between to make it easier to identify. And I'm going to call this part and location. And I'll say OK. And I'm just going to move it over next to the part number and location. So I have the part number, location, part and location, and my quantity. And I want to name this table before. And that's all we need to do to this one. So I'll go to the Home tab, and under Close and Load, I'll choose Close and Load 2, because right now I just want to create a connection. And I'll say OK. So now you can see I have my connection only for the before data. Now I'll go to the After tab and go through the same process. Data from Table Range, I'll say OK. Next, I'll go to Transform, Fill, Down. Choose Part Number, hold down my Control key, Location, Add a Column, I'll merge the columns. My separator again will be a space, I'll call this part and location, say OK, move that over to just be past the location column, and I'll call this after. And again, go to the Home tab, click my down arrow here, and close and load to. And again, I want to only create a connection. And so you can see my queries and connections, I have my before and I have my after. So what I'm going to do now is just hover over the before connection and go down to these three dots and choose that and select Merge. So basically I want to merge these two. And Excel is going to ask me well, on the Before tab, what column do I want to use as my identifier between the two? 
I'm going to choose the part and location column and then in the after choose the same one here and then the kind of join now notice I have a check mark the selection match 61 of 61 rows so all the part numbers for both matched up there were no more in one than the other and by default it selects the left outer meaning it's going to take all the items from the first and match those from the second and because I know that they are both identical in terms of the number of items and locations I can choose that if I wasn't sure I might want to choose all from both or if I knew that the second one had more uh, then I might choose all from second matching first but in this case all from first matching second left outer works and I'll say OK. Excel brings up the Power Query Editor again and you can see that I have after added to the before and there's an expansion item here. Now if I click on one of these it gives me an indicator below as to what that's going to look like. That looks just like I want it to. So I'm going to go and expand that and here it says do I want to use the original column name as a prefix in this case I do normally I wouldn't but this way I identify which is the before versus which is the after I'm going to say OK and now I have my part location part and location quantity for the before and I have the same group for the after so the next thing I'm going to do is which columns do I really need and which don't I so I know I want my part number I'm going to hold down my control key I know I want my location and my quantity I don't need those on the after the only thing I want on the after group is the quantity so I'm going to select that so I'm going to stay in the home tab and under remove columns I'm going to have remove other columns so now all I have left is my part number, my location, my before quantity and after. I can change this to say before and here I can have it say after. And then the last thing I want to do is do a comparison. So what I'll do is I'll choose my after column first, hold down my control key, then my before and if I go to add a column under standard I can choose subtract and now what it did is we took the after column and subtracted the before column so you can see I have 34 now I had 98 now I have minus 64 that's the difference if I would have done them the other way around I'm gonna go ahead and delete that last step if I chose before held my control key then chose after and did subtract now it took the after and subtracted it from before and that's not what I want so I'm gonna go ahead change that back choose my after first hold down my control key then before choose subtract and now I have my difference now I can go to my home tab and instead of close and load two I can just click on the top and just load it to my file and there is the final calculations that I have my part number location before inventory after and subtraction I can click in column A go to my data tab and sort it A to Z and now I have them all in order and that's how you can do that in Excel so thanks for watching this video if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so at my website, excel-bytes.com, or at any of the social networks noted below. Thanks a lot, have a great day, and happy excelling.